The following is a hoop ball presentation. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. The countdown to industry mock review is down to just one day away. But we got good stuff between now and then. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Fantasy NBA Today. It's Friday. I'm your host, Dan Bespris. D-A-N-B-E-S-B-R-I-S. I'm spelling it because I know that this is a time of year where new folks are finding the show. So welcome. Welcome. It's a pleasure to have you guys. Uh, Fantasy NBA Today is, of course, a Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company presentation. Check them out, hawaiianisles.com, I-S-L-E-S, delicious coffee. Uh, Recently found out that they have uh, also gotten their stuff to Australia. So if our listeners down there are interested, that's available. Uh, The great Josh Lloyd. I spoke to him uh, in a clip that'll be airing here in the next couple of days, uh, has ha- has sampled their goods, and also can say that it's delicious. So check that out. You can get it on Amazon Prime as well, Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company, H-I Kona Coffee on Twitter. And a big thank you to them, as always, our title sponsor of all podcasts at hoop-ball.com. Go check out the website as well, Hoop Ball. That's what's bringing this to you guys. Draft guide available for $15.99 through Sunday. Very important note here on this Friday show. Go get that at Hoop Ball as well. Again, I would uh, strongly recommend you just start the podcast if you're new by following me on Twitter. Everything that I do ends up going through that feed uh, at D-A-N-B as in boy, E-S as in Sam, B as in boy, R-I-S as in Sam. We've got Hoop Ball Leagues that are closing out here in the next little bit. They're filling up, so just a few spots left. We've got the draft guide available. Uh, I'll be tweeting out stuff related to these podcasts and these industry stuff. Just follow me over there, uh, and I'll make sure that that uh, you know everything that's going on. Plan for today is to sort of wrap up the week of Yahoo ADP analysis. And as I promised on yesterday's show, we're not just going to do the next 25 because that takes us from Derek White through, like, Kelly Olynyk, And that's just, frankly, not super interesting because there's some guys in there that you're just probably not going to draft, like Danny Green. If you're in a standard league, there's just no upside there. Um, so what I thought we could do today that might be fun is just look at everybody past pick 100, because we did 25 the first day, uh, 26 to 50 on Tuesday, 51 to 75 on Wednesday, 76 to 100 yesterday. Today, it's just 100 plus. We're just digging into guys that are left, That'll take probably about half the show. And then what I'd like to do is sort of an overarching thing, where if you didn't get a chance to listen to all four shows that led up to this kind of culmination Friday, uh, we'll go through, and I'm going to list for you guys the most overpriced, I believe, players uh, on the board, on the Yahoo board right now, guys that you would be paying too much for if you took them at their current ADP. We also, as I promised have a mystery guest on today's show. It's I know who it is. Obviously, I've now spoken to him, so it's no longer a mystery to me. Uh, but we hadn't really planned this out, so it kind of came up out of the blue yesterday when we recorded it. And, uh, and now we're just dumping it into the show. And I'm excited to say, and you'll hear this momentarily, but through a series of beratings, through tongue lashings, I got our mystery guest to reveal two of his late round sleepers. And you know I hate that word sleepers, but I'm using it anyway because I know it'll catch your attention. Two of his late round values is what I would have said if I didn't want to just cheat and grab your attention. And so before we even get into the post 100 slash overpriced breakdown today, let's hear from our mystery guest. It was not promised. I didn't know it was happening, but a special treat has been bestowed upon us. We are graced by the big dog. Do I hear him? Arf, arf. (laughs) Low, low. What's that sound I hear? Uh, It's been a while. The founder, the creator of Hoop Ball, the creator of the B-150, the creator of the Brewski Breakdown, Aaron Brewski himself. What's up? It's been, good Lord, when was the last time we were on a show together? Like five, six months ago? 
I don't know, Dan. I'm a little rusty. I might just barf all over myself here. <laughs> Are you feeling a little nervous today? <laughs> no. No, probably not. Uh, so what's happening, man? It's been forever. What, what's the, it, like, normally in the off season we talk about what's going on at Hoop Ball. We do some projects. I wanted to give you a little time to breathe before I poured you back into this thing. Uh, what's the news? It, you know, it's hard to be nervous about a podcast when uh, you're about to, like, literally any minute go watch the birth of your first child. Mm. Unbelievable. Congratulations. I know I've said that off air, but I don't know if the, do the people know? I've been dripping it out there, you know, on the Cos and Bruce show. We've talked about it a, a few times. Uh, so I think it's out there. I haven't put it out on Twitter, you know, just because Twitter's whatever. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wise decision. Yeah. And, uh, so I mean, but it, it's, and as you know, and, and it was funny you tweeted out, that uh, you and I talk every day for about 30% of your day. I thought that was being generous, by the way. <laughs> on the low side or high side? On the low side. <laughs> yeah, I thought so, too. I, I went with a low like, number. I was like, no one's going to believe that it's 50%. It really is. And, um, you know, what all of our growth here and then also having the baby has done is I remember, you know, getting the news in January and then just going, oh my goodness, <laughs> we have so much to do. And then the growth has hit. And, um, you know, so what it's done, and it's really actually been nice, is I think in January I was like, okay, well, we're going to just have to huff this thing and, and just move. And we've been moving and moving and moving and moving for nine months. And it's really forced us to, to get fast. And it's forced us to do everything early. And it really just like... I ended up getting everything done about like two weeks early, it felt like, all along the way. And that's been great, you know. So we've, um, you know, we've been able to do a lot. And uh, from a Brewski 150 perspective, because of the growth, uh, because of all this extra additional planning and, and that motivation to get things done, I just found myself, you know, with all sorts of extra time, believe it or not, to do the things I've always wanted to do. Some, some of the more advanced research and um, so and that combined with the, the amount of player movement that we've had, and these are some of the more complex projections that I've seen in a couple of years, at least three years. You know, I felt like the last two to three years, I call them public years. I felt like almost anybody could do that stuff. And um, now, obviously, that's not the case, but, you know, you just want things to be challenging. And, you know, because with the challenge, it comes comes the opportunity. So here we are. And it's just this massive year um, looking at the list and I'm just not I'm not like Salve, I'm laughing like there is so much stuff out there. And, you know, not to say anything about anybody else, but even like, you know, intermediate expert situations, you know, I'm seeing our guys just ripe for the, for the taking. So that I didn't feel last year. We still cleaned up and I didn't feel it the year before. And we still cleaned up. So I, I hope this is the year that we just boat race everybody, you know, and, and, and just firsts first, you know, you get you're in six, eight leagues and it's just firsts, you know, for all of them. So, you know, that's good. I'll knock on some wood because I don't, you know, obviously injuries could strike and just, you know, knock us out in a couple of places. But I, I'm just extremely excited for this year's take yeah, let's uh, let's get everybody some wins, and then they can come back and they can uh, they can spend some of that the following year on various things we've got for sale at Hoopball. So I'm I'm sure that uh, you'd like to make mention of a few of those things before. Uh, by the way, there's going to be a B150 tease coming up in just a few minutes, so don't go anywhere. But brew. What do we have for sale right now? I know the B150 is coming out in a couple of days for early bird guys, but I think there's a draft guide sale going on. Uh, what can people purchase from you? I'm this is this is your floor. Use it. <laughs> They're buying from me. Ooh, cool. Um, well, you know, we we did kind of clean up the product offerings uh, quite a bit. So uh, obviously the draft guide's on sale, and the current price point will last for the next week. So, uh, you know, it's, it's $15.99 right now. So you definitely want to get in there and get it while you can. I know we got some promo stuff that's going to be happening, and I don't want to step on any of that. But really, with this thing, you always just want to get it early because, you know, it's, it's, chances are you're going to get the better price early uh, rather, than you're, rather than waiting. So uh, we've got that. We've got 
Game Time Premium, which used to be our in-season premium product. So that is um, really, really just a ton of improvements. Um, you know, year to year, we always want to improve with this stuff. But this year, I think we're going to have something that just is is probably you know, we almost don't want it to get too good because we don't want to inform our, our competitors about what they could be doing over there. Um, so I think our iteration this year is really nice and that covers you throughout the season. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're a competitive, if you, if you, I mean, even if you just like this for fun and you just like to hang out with folks that are like-minded that, that think about fantasy all the time, you know, but if you're competitive, there's no other product out there that's going to give you this level of access to really, really smart pros that they do this every day. So, if you want to bounce ideas back and forth, if you want to get insights, if you want to get tools that are going to help you be competitive at that level, it has that level of granularity. And then if you also just want to hang out with like-minded folks and just have a good time, I think you guys in the, the, the hangouts realm and the chats and everything that we do there, I think the community at hoop ball is, is really great. And it, it, there's something about that. And I, and I always looked at the big sites that, you know, had to kind of deal with the knuckleheads out there and sort of just laughed. When I was at Roto World, even we didn't have to deal with as much of that as if you were, say, at Yahoo or if you were at CBS or if you were, you know, dealing with the comment sections over there. Um, our community is great. So you get that with the product. And so what we did with the products this year is we created some packages. So if you wanted to get both the draft guide and game time premium, you can get the pro package. That one right now is for $36.99. So that will also go up in price after this week. So if you wanted to get both of those things, it's a great way to get both. And then if you wanted to get early access to the B150, because as you guys know, once we release this thing, the market moves. And so what we try to do for the most competitive folks out there that need to get this early, they've got drafts in you know, late September, early October, we, we want to get that to you, but that will also come at an additional price. So if you're buying the Brewski 150 a la carte, that's going to be $26.99, and it gets released on September 23rd. So, um, but you can buy it ahead of time. You can buy it ahead of time. You can um, get the uh, $26.99 price through today, actually. I just noticed that that was still up. Um, you can get what we call the Champions Pack, which includes all of the above, as well as early, including early access to the B-150. You can get that currently for $46.99, and you can get that for that price through today. It goes up to $48.99 after today. Oh. So, um, right. Well, a floor, a floor well-used, good sir. So uh, Draft Guide $15.99, that's for five, I think, additional days. Um maybe four, depending on what, when everybody's listening to this podcast. So um, obviously we want folks to go buy that stuff, but I can't have you on here to shill for the products without making you give away something for free. That's the rule of Fantasy NBA Today. Brew? I don't like this rule I know. at all. You got you got no <laughs> choice in the matter. You, you left me in charge of this show, and now all hell's broken loose. How, so, how often do we fight about this, by the way? <laughs> literally all the time. Of the 30% of the, t- of the day that we're talking, like 29%. I'm forcing Brew to just keep giving stuff away. I'm the well, well because <laughs> I'm the, you got to keep it on the premium side. Because I mean, if you just give everything out for free, then it just goes out into the universe, and then nobody wins. You know, because I literally, when we release this stuff, the markets move. The the the, I mean, and it happens in other directions too. If I see somebody like Ryan now say something that I haven't caught, you know, Ryan Nouse over at Roto World, or or like Matt Stroop over at Roto World, you know, these guys are really dialed into the game. Naturally, it's going to move you, you know. So what we're trying to do is protect the values so you guys get these four, six, eight, ten round jumps in value. So when well, me and Dan are always fighting, and, and sometimes I'm, I'm like, is this guy going to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you don't give something away on this pod now that I've said you are. I don't want to have to edit my own thing out. Well, okay. Keep talking, and I'll and I'll probably give you something. Okay. Uh, you're wait. Can I do the? I'm gonna drop the the scene from Happy Gilmore. You're very handsome. I am not good looking. You're smart. I'm. What stupid. do you mean, handsome Dan? <laughs> By the way, I looked it up. It's the nobody's Yale. ever called me handsome Brew. Well, that's because there's not a bulldog named Handsome Dan out there or Handsome Brew. Apparently, it's the Yale Bulldog. I looked it up. This is a reference to a conversation that we also had off air. I had a a clubhouse attendant in Bakersfield that called me Handsome Dan, and I had to look it up, and it's a dog. He named me after a bulldog. 
I don't know if I should, yeah, I don't know if I should be flattered or, you know, think that maybe I have a bigger underbite than I realized. Uh, what's the, what's the last thing that he said? I don't, I don't remember the sequence of events in, in that, uh, American classic from the nineties, but have I, have I buttered you up enough yet to, to drop a little nugget? Yes, you've buttered me up, Dan. Okay, good buttering. Thank you. I was getting, I was getting tired over here. All right, what can we, what can I squeeze out of you for free? All right, so um, I, I mean, this is a target-rich environment. Like, I can't say enough. I mean, the list of, I mean, there's 40 players that are undervalued, like significantly, and so uh, we'll just see how it goes. I mean, you know, things can change in draft season. Obviously, we haven't even had media days yet. We haven't had the hype hit. You know, any number of guys. There's plenty of Dan's D bombs out there. <laughs> <laughs> that's lest we forget they've been renamed the old farts underdrafted club which as we all know what does that you, stand for yeah uh o-f-u-c we can't yell it out oh, loud really? on the, <laughs> can't yell it out loud on the podcast um yeah i i love me i love me some old guys but you're listen you the the brewski 150 is about being more aggressive than i am and then there's an element to working that into the strategy, and I know when I use your stuff, Brew, it's largely when you get out towards no man's land where guys are not just falling to you. That's where you go and you make your reaches is when you take your risks for and, and you're looking for upside because the downside is, who gives a crap? You drop the guy if he doesn't pan out. Um, and so I know you've got a laundry list of them because of all the player movement, and obviously this benefits folks that get the B-150, you get the draft guide, but I'm I, I I need I need something out of you before I let you get back to your day. I can't let you sign off Skype without getting one player out of brew. Okay, I'll give it to you. Dan. All right, nice. <laughs> but I feel it's good about you this. know I'm 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 just sitting here looking at this list. There's so many. Um, you know I think the guy that that I'll probably give folks. It's not I'm not going to give you the premium of the premium, and but I will give you an HB six candidate. And for those who are not, um, those who don't know the HB six is sort of every year we go through and find six guys that really, you know, they might not be the biggest value leapers. They might not be the, you know, the, the highest value guys at the end of the year, but they're the ones that have the bigger jumps. They're the ones that are sort of the diamonds in the rough that people aren't noticing. And usually they hit and they hit big. And, um, so he is in contention for the list. Um, I don't know if he's a favorite to make the HB6, but he's an, he's an old name from around here. He's, he's a success story, and he's totally undervalued as usual, and it's because he looks like the kicker from the replacements. Come on, are you really giving me Joe again? I'm giving you Joe. Oh, I'm, my you, goodness. You know what? And, and I'll even give another old HB6 guy from last year who was on pace until an injury hit, which was Kent Bazemore. Oh, I love Kent Bazemore. I'm so glad you said it, that it's, one. It's, it's with Baze, it's, it's funny because he gets so much flack for not being a good player. There, there's, there are people out there that are just like, he sucks. He's not good. He's terrible. You know, and he, at the end of last year, kind of looked out of shape. But, you know... Atlanta was a weird place last year. If you were on the way out in Atlanta, you know, it looked like you were checked out. It was kind of one of those things where the new regime comes in and the old players from the old regime know that they're on the way out and they just like stop caring a little bit. Um, they were doing funny things with his minutes there. And now he goes to Portland where they need him to be good, you know, and he's never been a guy that plays more than 27 minutes per game. Really the key for him always has been his health if his knee is healthy you know what he's going to produce and that turns out last year he was going on like a top 35 pace while he was healthy and you got him last year in the hb6 he was going at about like 115 125 and he's right later i think he's head. later than that this year oh i'm sure he's later than that this year so he's not even in my list of hb6 candidates so there are about 20 guys that I like better than him. And the and way that people can get those is to get the Brewski 150, get the draft guide, be ready for and, it. And let's be clear, because you cut me off, Dan, as I was pitching. <laughs> the, the, there's an early B-150 that gets released on the 23rd of September, and there's the regular B-150 that gets released on um, October 7th. And that one just so, goes. That one goes into the draft guide by. That itself. just goes into the draft guide. So if you buy the draft guide, you get the the B one fifty on October seventh. So, 
um, just so you guys know some dates there. But, um, you know, back to Smoke and Joe. Everybody, I think, thinks that, that Utah is going to be just jam-packed. You know, they add players and, you know, he's out there doing the Joe Ingles thing where he's like, I'll just defer. You know, you want me to come off the bench? That's fine. But he's turned into, and by the way, if your team needed a small forward and they passed up on him and said, oh, we're not going to offer him big money. We're not going to offer him 20 mil per year. You know, that was dumb. I'll just say that. Um, He's proving to be one of the better players in the NBA. You know, he's out there kicking Team USA's butt, you know looking like the best player on the floor. And that's what's going to happen with Utah. And he had issues with his son. You know, it was autism, and it really hit that family hard. And you could just tell. And his home road splits last year, there had to be some connectivity there. You know, he just wasn't the same guy last year, and he was still really good. So I think he, in a sort of a contained 30 minute role is going to do exactly what we think he's going to do, but he's still really under ranked under uh, uh, definitely under drafted. But, you know, you look around the, in the industry as we do after we complete, you know, our ranks, you, you see he's still undervalued. So, yeah. um, you know, this is a guy I think you can get sort of mid to mid late rounds and, and he's probably going to compile his way to a top 50 finish. His ADP currently, by the way, is 103 on Yahoo, so very much That's crazy. A, a late number on that one. And Kent Bazemore is somewhere in like, whatever stratosphere. I don't even know. He's, he's like, like not one, drafted. Yeah, not drafted in a lot of spots, which is uh, that one I can't get I mean, Bazemore is probably the more valuable of the two recommendations. Mm. Um I got two. I, I berated you enough to get but, but, two today. But, you know, with Bays, it's, it's hard because, you know, it is a late-round guy. You can get him at the end of drafts, and he's, um, you know, if he's hurt, he's hurt. That, that's the one thing we'll always have to watch with him. That knee is a little bit of an issue, but, man, you talk about a guy with some pop. And now we watch and see where these guys' ADPs are a week from today when, 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 <laughs> Brew, when Brew destroyed them for all of us. Uh, Aaron Brewski at Aaron Bruski on Twitter, the founder, the creator of hoop-ball.com. It's a pleasure to have you back. We'll be doing our longer uh, segments coming up here in the next couple of weeks, but I wanted to get everybody a taste, and I yelled at you enough to get two sleepers out of you. So thank you. You know what? Dog. Everybody just thanked my wife for, for not delivering. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because we thought this was happening two days ago, so we're, we're, just, we're in overtime right now. I thought I was Skyping you straight from the delivery room today. No, but, but hey, you know what? Let's just test things out. We'll see if you <laughs> Skype me during the delivery and I take the call if I get shot on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that you, everybody's going to keep me from not doing that. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> He's Aaron Bruski. Bro, um, good luck to you guys. It's, it's quite an adventure you're about to embark upon. I think the next time we talk, you'll be a daddy. Well, thank you, sir. And this feels as good a time as any with Brew about to uh, have a kid to remind you guys of our continued partnership with the good folks at mybookie.ag. You guys want to bet on, uh, I don't know, (laughs) should we bet on Aaron's kid? (laughs) No, it's probably not a good idea. Sorry, Brew. Uh, Mybookie.ag, our official partner in online betting here at hoop-ball.com. Head on over there now. NFL wagering happening as we speak. They've got a number of things going on at MyBookie, but I think the one that I glom onto the most, in addition to the, the match bonus, which I'll tell you about momentarily, is the notion that where you're betting is as important or even more important than who you're betting on. And MyBookie.ag cares about that. They are the best in the business. They have customer service. They have player perks. They are the the online site that has started to actually take a ton of pride in this. There's so much, there's so much upside for places like my bookie that you're looking at the ones that came before them that didn't take that same measure of pride. It's just a massive missed opportunity. Just do a few things better and you're good to go. And instead they just do all the things better. Better promos, better perks, better things to wager on, better in-game betting. It's just all the stuff to make your life more fun and easier. I've moved my money over there. The NBA bets are coming here in a couple of weeks. We're under five weeks from the start of the season. 
Uh, you can bet parlays. You can bet on games once they've begun. They've got in-season wagering or in-game wagering, I should say. They've got fantasy sports wagering on there, meaning you can bet on how many fantasy points individual players are going to get. Sign up now, start a new account, and use the promo code TODAY, T-O-D-A-Y. The promo code is the word TODAY, T-O-D-A-Y, when opening your new account, and they'll match your first deposit up to $1,000. My bookie, B-O-O-K-I-E, dot A-G. Play, win, get paid, and then, if you're feeling great about it, you can buy me lunch. <laughs> I won't stop you. I'm not that proud, man. Smoking Joe and Kent Bazemore. And I got to ask myself, what year is it? It's actually kind of amazing. And this is not me making fun of Brew, because he and I, just, I mean, we go after each other all day. This is, this is the joy of working at Hoopball. It is that despite how many times now these particular guys have been successful they still are priced super low. Joe Ingles last year overall was only number 98 on a per game basis in nine category leagues. He did play in all 82 games. So by totals, he was significantly better than that. But you know that I pay attention to the per game stuff. The key here, and Brew mentioned it, there was a seriously ugly home road split thing that was going on, and, and maybe it was indeed tied into the family stuff he had going on, which I, I think we're, I don't know if we can say happily that he's sort of over that because it's something that clearly he's going to be dealing with for his entire life. But it seems like as a family, they've, they've sort of figured out how to approach this, and he's doing wonderful things for the cause now too, which is uh, stellar, just a good dude dealing with a hard situation and making it better for himself and for others. His second half was vastly superior to his first half. That, I think, is the point that needs to be emphasized with Joe Ingles. He was outside the top 100, and it was by a fair amount in the first half of the season. Second half of the season, he was top 75. Post-All-Star break, he was at 13, 4.5, and and 7. And, by the way, he hit 2.83 pointers over that stretch, which I realize is a, a stat you can get a lot of, but we're talking about a guy you can draft in the 12th round in most leagues at this point, or at least the 9th or 10th. Seven assists that late? Maybe that number won't be as high with Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell around, but he's just a ball mover, you know? He knows what to do. His steals were down over that stretch. That's a number that could actually come back, and his free throw shooting was atrocious last year, which I would venture to guess will also be a little bit better. Between the two guys that Brew mentioned, as long as we're just breaking them down, I'm way, way more in the Kent Bazemore camp, if only because his job, whereas with Joe Ingles, his job got a little bit more complicated, even though he's the better by a lot, better player between those two guys. The difference that I saw on the Bays front is that he's going to a place where he has to play. Portland needs him desperately. They traded for him uh, in trading away Evan Turner, who was sort of, you know, he's a, he was a crowd favorite there, even though he wasn't particularly good. Whatever. Neither one of these guys is all that good that, that moved back and forth in that trade. The thing we need to remember is that Bazemore puts up fantasy numbers in 26 minutes a game. And then everything he gets over that is just gravy. Yes. Let's start with the negatives. The negatives on Bazemore is that his field goal percent is not good. His free throw percent is meh, fluctuates pretty wildly on a season-to-season basis, so you really don't know what you're getting on that front. And you know I'm generally afraid of guys who don't have great percentages. But... And his assists will probably be lower because Damian Lillard is going to be running most of the offense, and when he's not, C.J. McCollum's going to be doing it. But Bazemore does other stuff. He's going to get you his dozen points. He's going to get you a few rebounds. He'll get a few assists because he's a passer as well. And his defensive stats are going to be juicy. And last year they were juicy before they basically just sat him the entire second half of the year. He had that ankle injury, and then they just, in Atlanta, they were like, you know, we're going young. This is done. The first half of the season, he was cruising. Baseball was great before that ankle injury last year. And Brew mentioned it. I mean, he was playing in every game. Uh, his per-game stuff was between 50 and 70. 
and his totals at that point were above 50. And then it all just came apart. He missed time between uh, right around Christmas. He got hurt a little bit after that. He missed about a month and then just never really got his minutes back. Prior to that, he was playing in the high 20s in minutes. And you can look at the game log. I mean, you're talking about usually two steals a game. He was averaging a little under a block a night. Three, four assists, four or five rebounds. He was dominating. Now, he had a bigger role with the Hawks than he will in Portland. In terms of when he was on the floor, the usage was higher. But as I look at this Portland roster, and I can basically promise that the Hassan Whiteside, uh, Zach Collins dual front court experiment is not going to last, even if it begins, they don't have a power forward on that team besides basically Mario Hazonia. So at some point, guys are just going to get mushed around and play out of position, and they're going to have to go small, and Baze is going to be a part of that because he can play defense. He's going to find his minutes. I love that one. I, I'm, he's a guy I'm taking in the last round in almost all of my drafts. So thank you to Aaron Bruski for coming on the show, talking about what we got going on at Hoopball uh, on the draft guide side, on the Bruski 150 side, and for dropping two sleepers. I figure that's the price you pay, man. Right? If Bruce's going to come on and he's going to sell you a bunch of stuff, he's going to give you a few things for free. He can, he can punch me in the mouth for it later. Uh, let's do a little bit of the, the post-100 and all overpriced team. We're going to start, we're going to go in reverse on today's show. So we'll start with the all overpriced roster. And we'll basically, this is a, a condensed version of what we've gone through the last four days. And the ADPs have shifted a tiny bit over the course of the week, which does make this a tiny bit uh, more difficult. Uh, Joel Embiid is overpriced for someone who still hasn't cleared the 65-game threshold. And I'm not going to do a bunch of analysis on these guys. We're just going to go through, we're going to list them, and we're going to give probably about one sentence on why. Joel Embiid, injury concerns. Kawhi Leonard, a little bit on injury concerns. He's not super overpriced, but a little bit. Uh, Russell Westbrook finally starting to come down a little bit, but the free throw issue. Luka Doncic, overpriced because... And and by the way, you're going to hear a segment coming up uh, with our buddy Kyle McEwen that talks about how things could improve for Luka, and he makes a lot of really good points. Um, My overarching theme with a, a guy like Doncic is not necessarily that things won't happen, but that you need multiple things to happen for it to sort of all fall into place. And so for me, it's not that there's no chance it'll happen. It's just that I'm not willing to be the guy to take that chance. So I think he's he's a little bit, he's priced a bit too high for me. And a lot of guards are actually, because as we mentioned, Yahoo's gotten really aggressive with them. Luca's at 17.7. That's, that's really early. Uh, I think Devin Booker is a little overpriced in 9-cat at the very least at 19.2. He hasn't stayed healthy. I mean, we know he can score, but he has... Pretty significant holes in his game in the 9-cat format. Turnovers being a big one of them. Defensive stats being some others. Uh, I think Trey Young is a bit overpriced, although his number is coming down. He's now at 21.2. And that overprice is just because we need that one additional leap. And I thought we saw a lot of it towards the end of last year. Ben Simmons, he makes the all-overpriced team at 25.1. I don't know that there's anybody out there in a 9-category format that's going to tell you he should be going near 25. I don't, I don't think there's anybody. And in pro drafts, he basically doesn't go that high unless someone's punting. So he makes the all-overpriced team. I think Donovan Mitchell by a little bit. Not as much. You know, he's going in the middle of the third round now as opposed to the second round last year. And he could get there if the durability's right. So this is slightly overpriced, but certainly doesn't make the all-overpriced team. Uh, Mitchell Robinson at 28, uh, only because I want him... And I'd wish he'd fall, but a little bit overpriced here given the Knicks situation. I'm less afraid of it, of him, than some of the other guys. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, I think overpriced in 9-cat because he does have the free throw and turnover issues. Not overpriced in 8-cat, but certainly in 9. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, kind of the same story. Field goal percent and turnover issues. A little bit overpriced in 9-cat. Derek Favors, overpriced in 9-cat. He's down now to 42.5 instead of in the 30, so that's going the right direction for our desires. But for a guy who was 
kind of an under-the-radar successful center last year, got traded, and now Yahoo got super aggressive with him. They just blew up his, his value. No one's taking him at 42.5 in the drafts I'm seeing, nor should they. A lot of things have to break right for a guy who's been pretty dinged up. I'd love to get him. I'd just love to get him 25 picks later. Uh, Bam Adebayo, a bit overpriced at 46.2, only by a little bit. But again, you know, that's hype train stuff. If we could get him pushed into the 50s and, and a early fifth round pick, that would make a big difference for me. And I know I'm splitting hairs a little bit, but that's how I feel. Jaron Jackson Jr. at 48.8. Kind of the same story to me. He's about a half round overpriced before I'd start to consider him. Blake Griffin at 50 because I don't know that he can replicate as good as he was last year. As we move into the next chunk of guys, it's tough to call people overpriced because now you're not spending very much on them. Uh, but I would say Terry Rozier, probably a little bit overpriced, given unless you've built a team that can withstand what he's likely going to do to your turnovers and field goal percent, uh, you can't be taking him in this spot. I mean, you need to have a strong team in those two categories for when then his scoring and assist will be able to help you. Uh, even though his passing is not all that great, so more scoring threes and maybe some steals. Uh, but you need to be able to deal with his negatives, and they're not little. Hassan Whiteside, I think a bit overpriced, but I'm not going to pick on that one. Lonzo Ball, a little bit overpriced because we don't really know his role, and I think the name is still dialing it in. He's a guy that should be going later, given the injury history and, and all the misfires that we've seen from him so far. Uh, Lou Williams at 83, overpriced because he's not going to have much of a role with the Clippers this year. DeAndre Jordan, he's listed at 89, but he's going later than that and everything. So I, it's hard for me to call him overpriced because basically nobody's paying the price that he is. Kyle Kuzma and probably Freddie Van Fleet. But I mean, these are barely ones because we're talking about players near 100. We can't even really talk about it at this point. So that's your overpriced guys we've talked about over the last four days and a very quick iteration of those overpriced guys. And now the part that I was a little bit more excited about. These, to me, are the post-100, and they're not all going to be value guys. These are just interesting things. These are guys I wanted to talk about in the after-100 range that we really haven't gotten into very much on this podcast because every week we get to about 100 and then we run out of time. And I'm going to do my best to attack these in chronological order. Here's a name we haven't talked about very much. TJ Warren. He's going to play. You know, Indiana likes him. He's a value guy for them. And with Victor Oladipo out, there's a pretty defined role for him on this team. He's a high percentages guy. He's going to be on the floor. He can get you steals, blocks, and provided he can stay a little bit healthy, I think he could be a great grab. I would point out that last year before he got hurt, he was shooting 49% from the field and 81 from the free throw line with 18 and 4 and almost two combined defensive stats. That was always the fear with him three years ago that that wasn't going to come around. But the steals and blocks have actually been pretty solid. He's not going to be able to chuck like he did in Phoenix, but he's going to be in a much better system. And I firmly believe he's going to be playing a lot of powered forward minutes on this team. I don't, I don't believe in the Demonis, Miles Turner front court long term. I think he's an option there with some upside. You know, he was a top 50 guy when he was healthy last year. We already heard about Joe Ingles earlier on this podcast, or, or I would throw his name into the mix. Uh, JaVale McGee at 104.5. Haven't really talked about him since the DeMarcus Cousins news broke because Dwight Howard rendered him a little bit more frightening. But in terms of upside guys, and we're not even seeing him getting drafted anymore, but this is a guy who only needs 20 minutes to be fantasy relevant. Remember, he played 22 minutes a game last year. That's it. And a lot of that was in the middle of the season. Remember, he was dealing with the pneumonia stuff. 22 minutes a game last year. He was at 12 and 7.5 and with two blocks a night. Number 52. I think I'd take a chance on him. You know, they really don't want Anthony Davis playing center during the regular season. So how much, I mean, really how much do you think he's going to play center? And how much do you think Dwight Howard is really going to play? There's 20 minutes left at that center spot, at least. 
He shouldn't go too much over that, by the way. His body will break down. J.J. Redick at 110. He's going to have a perfectly reasonable year. This is not as a limited upside play, obviously. Uh, but, you know, he's always safely right around number 90. So if you get to this point, realize you need three threes a night. And a terrific foul shooter who gets you no defensive stats. He'll be out there. He'll be on the board for you. Terrence Ross. Sort of no reason to think that his role won't be about the same. He was just inside the top 100. So, again, limited upside play. But, I mean, I'd rather have J.J. Redick between the two. Even if Ross might score a little bit more this year, maybe they flip-flop in that department. I, I just I like that Redick's not going to kill you in his field goal percent either, but he's another guy that's been inside the top 100. Dwight Powell at 116 is a guy that we haven't heard a whole lot about lately. I do think he and Porzingis are going to share the floor for stretches this year. He's worth a flyer pick late. Paul Millsap at 117. We know his minutes were and will probably continue to trend down. But even a beat-up Paul Millsap last year was a top 80 guy. He gets you steals, blocks, rebounds, field goal percent, low turnovers now. He can pass a little bit. There is a Jeremy Grant breathing down his neck. But Millsap's going to be out there. I mean, he's a little bit lower on my priority list at this point in the draft, but worth a look. By the way, I haven't really gone through the, the names that are a little bit less interesting to me in this stretch, I guess, but they're probably worth exploring as well as we sort of powerhouse our way through this section uh, of the draft board and not interested in Willie Cauley Stein. I don't think he's going to play enough. Not interested in the rookies, but you know that about me. Not really interested in Kevon Looney either. It's going to be a lot of Draymond Green at center out there. Not super interested in Jalen Brown. Uh, either of the Bogdanoviches, I'm sure they'll both be fine, but not fun. Colin Sexton, not so much. I mean, yeah, he might get you some points there, but um, the rest of his game severely lacking. I had a little bit of a Nick Batum thing, um, but it seems like they're going to keep phasing him out, and he was just not super interested in the offense last year, so it's it's tough for me to trust him. There is some upside if he happens to care and try to get himself traded, but I just I don't know that that's how it's going to play out. I like Rudy Gay as a late-round flyer guy who can get you into that top 75 range. I think Kelly Olynyk is probably worth a look at this point as well. Dario Saric in Phoenix... Uh, probably not drafting him, but he's got some minutes that'll be coming his way. It's weird some of the names that are about, like Dario Scharch is right next to Andre Iguodala and Langston Galloway. One of those three guys actually is going to play and have some fantasy stuff to do, and the other two are not. The, the Yahoo rankings at this point are just no longer, I mean, everybody's basically got the same ADP. So who cares? I think Pat Beverly's still going to be okay this year. Davis Bertans. Goran Dragic. There's a lot of interesting names floating around out here. Tomas Sadoransky. P.J. Tucker was solid last season. Joe Harris was solid last season. We've moved away from organization, however, at this point of the podcast, and so I'd like to try to reel us back in just a little bit here on this Goofball Friday. Uh, going into the next 50 on the list, it, we'll, we'll rattle them off pretty quick, and then what we'll do is we'll kind of pull them all together here towards the end and pick some of our favorites. Uh, the next 50, the, the list gets a little bit thinner. I know this is a crazy thing to say. I do think Derrick Rose has a chance to have some fantasy value this year. Some, not much. Uh, not that excited about Zach Collins. I'm actually a little bit lower on him than others are. Rui Hachimura, I don't trust a rookie. I just don't. Tyler Harrow, don't trust a rookie, although I've heard good things. I think Jabari Parker could actually have an okay season in Atlanta. If they play him at the four, if John Collins happens to bounce around to the three or the five at all. Dennis Schroeder should have some, more so an eight cat, obviously, than nine. And then things get real light. Jakob Pertl was getting 20-some-odd minutes a game down the stretch last year. He could be an interesting blocks guy at the very end of your draft. Reggie Jackson, your post-100 point guard. We already talked about Kent Bazemore. I mean, legitimately, of all of the guys in this neck of the woods, Will Barton, by the way, is at 144. That's an interesting late-round grab. Will Barton and Kent Bazemore are the only two 
that you can point at them, you can be like, those guys make a lot of sense. And then Yahoo's ADP only goes up to uh, 156, 157 guys. I think you were able to sort of read between the lines a little bit on this discussion. Kent Bazemore is an obvious choice for guys that I like the most in this part of the draft. Will Barton is on that list of guys that I find extremely interesting at this point in a draft. And then you got to dial it back a lot earlier to that, you know, 100 to 150 range, which in the ADPs is actually 100 to 137, where you've got guys like TJ Warren and Joe Ingles and JaVale McGee and JJ Redick and Terrence Ross and Dwight Powell and Paul Millsap. And the list goes on and on and on with all Rudy Gay this is where you find these values, and this is where you take shots. There's no point. There's no point, and sorry to my guy Thaddeus Young. There's just no point in taking guys like Thaddeus Young anymore because you got to get somebody who's playing minutes at this point in the draft. You target guys who are either crazy per-minute dudes or guys who have solidified roles that you can count on for 30-some-odd minutes a game. That's the way you build the end of your draft out. Because there aren't, I mean, there's one, maybe two. I mean, how many guys, look back at last year, how many guys were drafted in that 130 range that actually had near top 50 production? It was like Pascal Siakam, and that's about it. Who's that guy in this bunch? There's probably one. But you're better off looking for the guy who's going to give you the top 75 production and play 75 games. 75 and 75 guys, we'll call them. Bays, Barton, possibilities there. Dragic, Pat Bev, P.J. Tucker. He was in the 85 range, I think. Dwight Powell. And then, obviously, guys like Warren Ingles. These guys are just inside, just outside the top 180 piece, so there isn't quite as much of a leap there. But that's what you should be hunting for. If you're picking a guy in this range and you're like, this guy could be a top 30 dude, you're probably wrong. There's like a 98 to 99% chance you're wrong. If you're picking a guy in this group that you think is going to play 27 to 30 minutes and give you top 75, top 80 per game numbers, that's an interesting way to do it. That's upside at this point. If your 130th pick outperforms by five or six rounds, that's upside. I hope that that point, I'm kind of drilling it in a little bit, but don't pick the guys that you think are flashy because it's just not going to happen. Don't pick the exceedingly boring guys. Pick the ones that have a a little bit of upside, a measure of predictability, because the guys beyond that are probably not going to play, and the guys beyond that are your midseason pickups. They're going to be out there waiting for you because ain't nobody going to pick someone in this range and then just hold on to them half the year if there's no showing that they're doing anything. And that, to me, I guess, is basically where we can kind of round up this section of the draft a lot of these guys are going to get dropped the ones that don't are the ones that are producing or the ones where people think they have a stash and there just aren't that many at this point so get a guy that's producing you don't even have to start them at the beginning of the year if you don't want to wait until these wait until you see if they're producing you have choices at this point uh reminder to everyone here Again, hoop ball leagues, they are almost full. And of course, as soon as I put that out in the Twitter world and here on the podcast, a billion of you hit me up. Uh, at Dan Bespris, again, is the Twitter handle. If we get enough people asking for a particular league type, then we could just open it and fill it right away. So please do keep the requests coming, but understand that if something like, say, you know, uh, the paid, the cash roto league fills up and only like two of you say you still want to join, you would just go on a wait list. But if there's like eight of you or nine of you, yeah, we'd probably open up a new one. So hit me up on that if you want to get in the hoop ball leagues. They're a lot of fun. Roto free, Roto cash, head-to-head free, head-to-head cash. They're all at fan tracks, uh, and the cash leagues are all $50 buy-ins. So those should be a lot of fun. Again, a reminder, you've heard it plenty on this podcast, but draft guide available at $15.99 through Sunday. Monday, I will break down my own team from the industry mock draft. And starting on Tuesday of next week, we will talk to one pro from the draft every day for 11 consecutive shows. 
It's going to be a lot of fun. For Aaron Bruski at Aaron Bruski on Twitter, I am Dan Bespris. Thanks so much to everybody uh, for listening throughout this week, throughout the off season. This ramp up is my favorite part of the year. Hit me up with questions. You have those well. It doesn't have to be about the hoop ball leagues. Uh, I, I love seeing what you guys have on your minds, and I hope that this stuff is helping. Um, I'm also having some folks uh, send over some stuff on ESPN rankings and also some other interesting gambling tidbits that will hit up in the next couple of weeks as well. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Again, back on Monday, we'll dive into the big industry mock for the next 12 days after. So long. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.